Harvey, want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. You're kidding. I'm serious. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. It's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. Whew. That man's not coming home for a long time. Uh, here's a fact. Sex sells. In advertising, music, politics, art, hey, you name it. At the end of the day, it's all about manipulating people into buying an idea. As a result, the advertising industry has spent the last century crafting their notions of gender and race. Something our next guest is seeking to showcase and perhaps give us a glint into the 2016 political season as well. He is a visual artist and photographer whose current exhibition, Unbranded, A Century of White Women, 1915 to 2015, is on display through May 23rd at the Jack Shaneman Gallery in the Chelsea District of Manhattan. Two locations, as a matter of fact. Welcome Hank Thomas, or Hank Willis Thomas to Midpoint. Hank, thanks for being here today. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you. Hank, how did you come up with this idea and what exactly were you trying to prove? What was the first point that you're trying to get through? Well, I have been, like everyone, looking at ads my entire life. And I more and more recently realized the power of them to actually help dictate how I see myself, how I see others, and, and the things I want. And I realized that when you remove all the text from advertisements, you start to see kind of hidden messages and so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at um, a demographic which is, you know, it's a, it's a fabrication um, over the course of a century and I thought um, why not look at white women a um, hundred years ago because a uh, hundred years ago no women had the right to vote in the U.S. and we have uh, Hillary Clinton, um, uh, a, a candidate, a viable candidate for the presidency. Well, what we're doing right now is we're seeing a number of the pictures here, and you're right, there's no text in here whatsoever. And what we're basically seeing is many times women as sex objects, women as the weaker sex, they're all white women. Wouldn't that be what you would expect, though, through perhaps the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s? Because that's what Madison Avenue believed they had to do, and that were the only people that they felt they had to reach at that time, correct? Yes. But I also think we recognize that you know a white woman is a, it's it, there is no such thing as a white woman they're just people and i think what happens as the project progresses is it's harder to define white women in a simple way and so you start to see very different ways of, of women being represented as beautiful powerful strong and valuable when did that start and why did that start you think in advertising well i, th I think it started to to seep in in the 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 early 60s where I think as a result of uh, women taking a bigger role outside of the house in World War II, um, a lot of women wanted to have um, more power and more, more opportunity and, and slowly found their ways into boardrooms and started to kind of affect in small ways and sometimes in large ways the way that uh, women could be represented. Isn't it fair to say that the trends though have changed a little bit because companies are being a little bit more diverse now because they have to be quite frankly they're understanding how life has changed how society has changed and how the demographics have changed here in america or do you still find them being a little hesitant to change oh i think they've changed dramatically but i think the prevalent messages are still the the over sexualized and highly sexist and often highly racist images how much does that bother you that here we are looking back and we're seeing a lot of pictures here now that we're even the 50s and 60s and 70s, but that here we are in the 2015s and there's still that sexism. There is still that racism. You would think that by now in the 21st century, we'd have gotten past that. Well, I think um, it's a very sexism and racism are, is very much in our DNA. Everything that we've been trained about other people is based off of fear. And I think what we see in the advertisements that are created by women and, and often by people of color are the playing out of um, these, these ideas. But, you know, also I think it's interesting that most of the people who are making images for white women are, quote unquote, white men. So you see you have a, a, a male interpretation of what a female's values are and should be. Um, and I think that does affect um, a lot of what we see. A couple of minutes that we have left here, Hank. Hillary Clinton in 2016 and, and the portrait that she will undoubtedly use. What do you think her campaign will use and how even opponents may then try to portray her in response? I, I think and I think she would like to be seen as a person, uh, as, 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 a, as a, uh, a qualified person. Of course, um, she'll be seen as a wife 
and be seen as a woman, uh, be seen um, in through through cla a, a class and race lens, and I I think she'll try to to speak to uh, the broader public and, and try to identify with as many people as she possibly can. But will she have uh, to she fall back on some of those traditional images one way or another? Because those are the ones that people always seem to want to hear about and ad agencies are always pushing forward. Well, I think she's going to have to strike a middle ground. I think she can't afford to do it, fall back on those things this time. And I think one of the things you see in the project is right around 1991 and 92, we start to see uh, these very prominent independent women images show up. And I don't think that's a coincidence that that's when we first saw Hillary Clinton. And we also see that again in 2007 and 2008 when she was running for presidency. So I think um, there seems to be a, a, a cultural awareness of the presence of Hillary as a, as a, as a powerful, powerful figure. And I think that'll be something that uh, we'll be seeing take place in a lot of ads in the next I got year about and a half. I got about 20 seconds left, left here, Hank. Do you think women now here in 2015 and political candidates have an advantage or a disadvantage in the way that they're being portrayed? Huh. <laughs> I think um, the more honest you are, the more disadvantage you'll be. And I think that's the, the real trouble with politics as we are. It's really an advertising campaign itself. Uh, and I think we need to find new ways to get to honesty in portraying our images and start to find respect for our individuals who are honest. Got to be careful, Hank. You're talking about honesty and advertising. That's tough right there. Uh, it is unbranded, a century of white women, 1915 through 2015, on display through May 23rd at the Jack Shaneman Gallery in both Chelsea locations. Hank, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's been great. Good luck for the exhibition.